Geralt. So content to see you. The Papillon Troubadour. Remember? Hey there. I've never found the opportune moment. See, I never had the chance, in fact, to say I'm a devoted fan. Hmm. Thanks. Of Master Dandelion. I know the bards, every ballad in this cycle about the Witcher. Oh, I cannot believe my luck. Need something from me? Indeed. A matter most magnificent. My coiffeur, Jean-Louis Lotovic, has gone missing. Now, you shall rescue him while I compose an epic ballad about it. Listen, fair folk, to a glorious tale of a missing friseur and a witter who'd prevail. What happened exactly? Claim the hairdresser's missing, but are you sure? Yes, yes. I've no doubt something's transpired. Something terrible, absurd. Jean-Louis is never late to work. He's punctual to a fault. I'm certain he'd be honored if I am the one to sing of his dramatic rescue. Fine, see what I can learn. Now, if you have to come with me, just one request. Stay out of the way. Mine and my swords. Of course. You shan't even notice me. Jean-Louis Studio is just there. Right here. Ah! What's the matter? I've hit upon the perfect ending. And all for the glory of her grace, the Duchess. Thought this was about a witcher and a coiffure. What's the Duchess got to do with it? Her grace can be as fickle as the cult she rides. Today, all remember my fine couplets at the tourney. Yet tomorrow, her illustriousness bought by her breakfast might demand a new epic poem. One must grab at opportunity before it flits away. Well then, where shall we start? At the door, by breaking it down. For his log. The manicure, curling, Cintrian pendulum, Rivian ponytail, raftsman's do. Hmm, long out of style in Novigrad. Ah, uh, his appointments. Last one was a certain Lady La Pompadou. Know her? Yes, a dear old bird. Jean Louis done her hair for a decade. Completely harmless. Sketch here. Looks like a map. This mean anything to you? I may understand where it points, but if so, there's not there, just fields and meadows. Think I understand. As do I. Perhaps. Around he looked, yet all was quite proper. I see razors, pomades, but no blasted hair chopper. Mind being quiet for a minute. Think I might know what happened to the hairdresser. No evidence of a break-in, no signs of a struggle. To my mind, he just went out to find ingredients for his pomade. Looks like he ran out. Pomade. Yes, indeed. He'd have gone into the meadows beyond the city to gather flower petals for it. Trolls must have devoured him. Or a cyclops. Splendid either way. Think you could find the place using his map? Naturally. Lead the way then. Pure poppycock, you beard mangler! The latest rage in some bomb botched covier. We're in Nilfgaard, you bong munch! What did he do to you? What did he do? He quaffed me, gave me a duck's ass, an ape drape, a beaver bottle. I don't even know. So ashamed I couldn't attend the tourney. I'd have proved my valor. Mamma Sel Vivian that have my prize. Then this scallywag with his talk of the rage. Missed my chance by the hair on my head. Got him back good from what I can see. That is but the start. I've not yet decided if I should snip off something more. Doesn't seem terribly chivalrous. What about honor? Your oath on the peacock? All that. I do vow on the noble bird I shall gut you if you do not skedaddle. Honored! Stand and fight! I challenge thee! And you boys dare not intervene! By golly, by gum, this will be... 
be chivalrous. Listen, children, a story you shall hear of a witcher who walloped a rogue knight's steady hair. I shall show that a... How long are you gonna make me wait? It's grown rather late. I believe we'll be on our way. Le Papillon, Le Beholder's wounds. You saved me at the last second. You're welcome. Jean-Louis Ludovic, I presume. Let's get out of here before he... Quiet! Both of you! I've got it! They froze in their fear, the knights, henchmen, and squires. While his bowel set loose, heaven would spiral. The witcher cleft him in two lacerated. His neck swing the swine adroitly castrated. With one more caress from the witcher's blade, the knight's guts popped out, his breakfast betrayed. Then he hobbled a pace on his stamp arms like crutches, all for the glory of her grace, the Duchess. I think you got confused. Sure you saw all that? Forgive me, Witcher, but poetry's hardly your forte. In fact, you know squat. To taste the audiences demand high drama, and I provide it. What about my pay? I've decided you should receive a reasonable share of the royalties. Payable, let us say, semi-annually? Meaning you're broke just now. <clears throat> I owe you a thousand thanks, Master Witcher. I, I'll gladly pay your reward. Not to mention trimming you when you see the need that come by. Mm, thanks. Take care now. I'm walking on water. Just like... <laughs> like who? Like a pond skater. Who are you thinking? <laughs> no matter. I suppose you thought nothing else in life could surprise you, eh? Wrong. Hey, happen to know how the hell I can walk on that water? Naturally, I know. Since time immemorial have I dwelt in solitude on this shore. And I can testify to the extraordinary nature of the lake. What's so extraordinary about it? I mean, besides the fact that you can walk on its surface. A sword. Most wondrous lies in its depths. I watch over it. The blade may be grasped solely by one who possesses the five chivalric virtues. Folk call me a lot of things, but virtuous? I don't know. Yet I do know, for I know who you are. You have proven yourself capable of great sympathy. You are a man of honor, as many can attest. Of humble means yourself, you show generosity to others. Your valor is the stuff of legends. Reason guides your actions, as it does those of all who are wise. You have proven the five chivalric virtues dwell in your heart. You mean the sword's mine? I can dive in and take it? The sword deserves the hand of a master. You must prove your skills are worthy through combat atop the water's surface. Are you ready? Any time. Then draw your blade.
you have proven worthy of wielding the blade, beyond all doubt. Behold, your Arendite. We've met before. Certainly. The Hermit admitted he knew you, remember? The Lady of the Lake. It is I. Forget not that you are a man right and honorable, devoted to doing good. And for these reasons you received the blade. Now bear it. And I trust this time you shall not lose it. Just wonderful. My eyes were not deceived, yet so far south. You, sir, of all folk, in all your fame. Mm-hmm. Me. South, in all my fame. Ah, oh, I've heard so much. Why, when Master Dandelion tarried in Beauclair, not a day passed without him baying out a ballad in admiration of your teeds. <laughs> yeah. Unwelcome little habit of his. But, what can I do for you? Ah, oh, you see my betrothed, Francois Le Goff. Vowed in my honor to bring me the head of the horrid beast they call Gretore. Mm. Couldn't have gotten you a bouquet, some sweets in a bag. Witcher, sir, you jest. A love most true demands proof through heroic deeds dedicated to the heart's captor. But alas, Francois has been gone a fortnight. Thus I must plead with you to see what's become of him. Could you? Would you? This Gratore. Know anything else about it, mademoiselle? Judging by the name, guessing it lives in a cave. Yes. From which it prowls when hungry. By night, when all are asleep, it creeps into villages. Then, of a sudden, breaks open shutters, reaches inside and snatches babes from their cradles so quickly they've not the time to yelp. Hmm. Nocturnal. Long prehensile arms. Intelligent. Francois claimed he would cut the filth down in a snap, but he's been gone so long. Will you help, sir? I cannot sleep. I fear this worrying will be the death of me. Do my damnedest to get your fiancé back safe and sound. Just, uh, mind telling me where to look for him? I forget you come from afar and do not know our land. They say Gratore has its lair in the caves at the foot of the Gorgon Hills. That close to the city? Telling me no bold souls have ventured out to defeat the beast? Quite the contrary. Plenty have. But none's returned. My concern is well founded. I see. All right. High time I set off. Halt, master. A beast lurks in there. Right. Expected as much, cause I... Shh, quiet, before you wake it. Come, I've camped nearby. We shall talk there. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak! Geralt of Rivia, crest of the bridge. Hail, and well met. Francois Le Goff, I presume. Your betrothed sent me. See, you've been gone a while, so you've got her worried. I... well, indeed, for... for... Grotore is a most fearsome beast. I must prepare properly for battle. Takes two weeks, that? I have tarried a bit, true, but the delay is done. My word I gave, thus the beast shall die. Wouldn't happen to need any help, would you? I... I don't know. 
After all, I did swear a solemn oath to... Deposit the beast's head at your beloved's feet. No mention of you killing it all by yourself, though. All in all, I... I suppose you're right. We must fight side by side, then. For honor! Perhaps we should turn back? If there's no beast, there's no beast. Damn shame, but we tried. Not so fast. Let's take a look around. Cradle filled with children's shoes. How I've ever seen a collection of this grotesque. Impressive. You'd think you were in a winter garden. Bones. Small skull. Fontanelle's not completely closed. An infant. About a year, maybe. They speak the truth. My throat, the damned throat was sturdy. I, I'm grateful, Witcher. You aided me greatly. Why the challenge? You couldn't have gone after something less formidable? A werebub, for instance? Uh, why? For... For the beast must match in ferocity the very ardor of my affection and... You're blushing, Sir Knight. Oh, it's my betrothed. The thing is, she champs at the pit to get married when we've not known one another but two years. So I vowed to slay Gratori. Thought it would buy me time to battle such a beast why it could take months. Mm -hmm. Especially at the rate you were going. High time you return to Beauclair, brave knight. Nay, oh, nay. The head of this beast is a trifle, wholly inadequate to express the love I harbor for my betrothed. The world awaits. Uh, to honor her, I shall cut down another, more terrible beast. Take my advice. Grab the damned head and cut the shit. You are blind to my predicament. Once I return, I will have no recourse. She'll drag me to the nearest shrine, one. Shut up and listen. Crests, scrap metal armor, swooning damsels. All that's nothing to do with hunting monsters. Witches work. Damn hard, dangerous, and thankless work that you're just not cut out for. Wanna prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. You do not mince words, Master. In Tucson, one might demand satisfaction upon trampled ground, for a lesser slight. Yet, there is truth in what you say, I cannot deny. I survived with my life by a hair. It is time... time I returned home.
got good news, madam. As do I. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> Prenuptial teachings at the temple tomorrow. Dress fitting the next morn, then a tour of the wedding venue. I have never been so happy. Hmm. Not sure these nuptials are a great idea. What? I beg your pardon? Young Master Legoff. Well, he wasn't exactly raring to get hitched. Seems to me you two should re... Well, I never. The nerve. Not another word. Take your coin. Leave us be. What's this about? Ah, the notice. Is that it? Are you a witcher, master? Noises at the cemetery. You the one they bother? Yes, yes, and I'm alone in that, it seems. That is, no one else has bothered to take any steps, though all must hear the racket. I took the matter up with the ducal guard. They claim they found nothing, but I'm not sure they even bothered to look. What's left for me to do? Should I sniff about the cemetery myself? The noises, they pretty regular? Each night, I live next door. I hear it loud and clear, as if through a horn someone had stuck in my ear. Ah! Hawk! Ooh! Fick! And then, whack! Thud! As if a mother bear slammed pate first into a cupboard. Know exactly what you mean. Fine, I'll tend to it. Any victims? Someone go missing recently? Or are we just talking noises? No one's come to harm, thank the gods. Why? Do you think it might be a monster? Could be, but doesn't need to, though. Might also be grave robbers, tramps. Remains to be seen. I can't rightly say what would be worse. Whatever the case, Godspeed, master. You'd rather lie about all day, flipping those cards like some... Dwarf! Disgusting! Indeed. It's far better to stand at the door of Lepiota's temple, mumbling prayers from dawn till dusk. Ingrid, I prayed for you, that you would cast off the yoke of gambling. Fine job you did of it. Seems the gods had also heard enough of your cackling. And you? Why are you here? This is a private conversation. Mind keeping it down? Neighbors are complaining. Neighbors? Everyone here is dead. I know not your name, but you must help me. I refuse to spend eternity at the side of this heathen. Remove him from my crypt at once. Slow down. What's the problem? This is my crypt. And this saintly shrew harangues me even in death. An eternity of nagging to misery. I was blind and a fool to marry him. He's a slave to the cards, prepared to wager his own child on a round of Gwent. Once, damn it, and as a jest. How many times must I explain? And... Who sank our fortune into some silly statue of Lepioda? Piety. That was my cause. The prophet immortalized would have transformed this land of blasphemy and betting. How was I to know it was all a fraud? Because I warned you some five hundred times. Quiet. Shut up, both of you. Who does the crypt belong to, rightfully? Must you ask? It's mine. My family's. The Decorantans. Are you illiterate? True. But my dowry served to repurchase it from those you owed. Look, if there's to be peace and quiet here, one of you's gotta go. Need to move one of you out. Yes. 
Take him. Please, do so, and I shall... I shall tell you where I hit his lucky Gwent cards. What? I knew it was you! And now, you would evict me from my crypt, then pay for the deed with my cards! Blast it all! Had I those very cards at the tournament in Belhaven, I'd still be alive! It's your fault, you pox incarnate, that they stabbed me to death! They murdered you for your debts! I had nothing to do with it! Come, I heed this good book, thumping wench. Mind, I know well where she hit those cards. I'll tell you myself, as soon as you've removed her. <sighs> Need to think about it. I see you fell for that pious tart drivel. Drax! Ah, oh, well, then listen. I've a request. Be a good fellow and set me in the chamber of the Gwent Friendship Society of Beauclair. It's just round the corner. You a member? That's just it. I was not. But I would have dearly liked to have been. And joining them in death shouldn't bother anyone. Certainly doesn't bother me. I'll do it. Where's this chamber? Ah, once you enter the catacombs, go straight. The chamber will be on your right, near the corridor's mouth, and I thank you. Jen's also looking for that Gwent club. What the poking devils? Who are you? Who sent you? So many questions, so few answers. Blimey, you're the plumbing philosopher. Get the smarmy cat diddler, lads. <sighs> if I only had a crown for every time a bunch like this. Those cards. Leaf the city through the Cooper's Gate, then we are right. Our house is easily recognized. A tree atones the sign above the door. I buried the chest in the garden beneath the rose bush. Tree on a sign, rose bush. Think I got it. Might I ask what you did with Louis? True, he knew nothing in life but Gwent, but I would still prefer he not spend eternity in a ditch or privy. Don't worry about it. Found him a nice place. Ought to feel right at home. Farewell. Hey there, I'm done. The cemetery ought to be real nice and quiet now. Ah, to sleep in my own bed once more. The clocks has grown intolerably loud. The punters bellow like men possessed. One madman especially, always shouting, ordering, ordering. But tell me, at the cemetery, what was it? Beasts, as you claimed? Nope, just a marital spat. That's it? But they hollered like Stuart pole cats. Mm. Sorry to bother you with such a trifle. Here, for your trouble. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 